there are two methods how zakat can be calculated. Because zakat is payable when you have it for one year. So you can keep a daily record of what is your wealth above the nisab level. You can keep a weekly record or a monthly record. So then whenever the nisab level is above, then you note down the date. On 1st of January, what was the nisab you had? 2nd of January, what you have? So what you had in the 1st of January, say 1st of January 2007. So 1st of January 2008, it will be liable for zakat. Then what you had on 2nd of January, calculate it, then 3rd of January, or on weekly basis, or on monthly basis. But to keep a record of all this is very difficult. Then you'll be spending half the day in keeping the record, which will be difficult. So it's not practical at all. The easier method and the safe method where mistake, inshallah, would be avoided is picking one particular day in the full year and calculate it exactly one year after that. Most of the people prefer Ramadan because it is the month of charity and you get more blessings and more rewards. But Ramadan is not the only month that you have to pick up. You can pick up any day of the year. But it should be calculated according to the Hijri calendar, not according to the solar calendar. So 1st of January 2007, 1st of January 2008 is wrong. It should be 1st Shaban or 1st of Hajj. But since Ramadan is the most pious month, 1st of Ramadan, you can take any day of Ramadan. If you take 1st of Ramadan, calculate all the assets that you have. And next year, if it's 1st of Ramadan, 1420 Hijri. Then 1st of Ramadan, 1421 Hijri. You should see what amount you have. Now, if you calculate only on one day and see exactly one hijri or later, one lunar later. It is the safest method. There can never be any possibility that you will give less zakat. There can be high chances you may give more zakat, but never less. Why? If you keep on calculating daily, then the level keeps on going up and down. But if you calculate one particular day of the year, which day you pick up, and if there happens to be the lowest collection, the lowest saving in the full year. Yet, you are paying the minimum amount of zakat. Say on the first of Ramadan, you have 100,000 rupees as saving, or $100,000 as saving. And that happens to be the lowest saving in the full year. Yet, since it's the lowest, you have to pay zakat on what you possess for one full year. So you have to pay 2,500 rupees or $2,500 on that amount. It's safe. But it may be that it is the highest saving of the full year. So here itself, you may be paying a little bit more zakat, but you won't be paying less. But some people may think, oh, it is the highest saving. That means, you know, I may be paying unnecessary more amount. There are chances you may pay more, but there are no chance you'll pay less. Because even if it is the highest, and if you think that you will try and catch the lowest point, the lowest point may keep on changing. It may be in the month of Shaban, it may be in the month of Rajab, it may be in the month of Hajj. And then if you try and catch that point, next year it will again change. So if you try and catch that point, there are high chances you will pay less zakat. So best is to pick up one point, one day in the full Hijri calendar, and keep on taking that every year. And you'll be less assured that you will never pay less zakat, you may pay more. Because if the wealth keeps on fluctuating up and down, you have to pay on what amount you possess for the full year. Yeah. But the lowest point once, maybe Shaban, the other maybe Ramadan, the third maybe Hajj, maybe any month, the safest is to pick up anyone, keep on sticking to that year, and inshallah you'll never pay less. You may pay more. Sometimes 10% more, 20% more, 30% more, it'll never be less, inshallah. So this is the safest method, and it's the best method. And on this day, whichever day you pick up, you have to calculate all the savings you have, whether in cash, what is the bank balance, what is the gold you possess, whether in the form of jewelry, whatever stock you possess, whether in shares, whatever investment, all this you put together, or your business, the stock trade of your business, all put together. If you're due to receive some amount from someone, even that has to be calculated because he has given a bit late, but yet it's your property. Or if you have given some loan to someone, that has to be calculated. But if you have to give some money to someone, that has to be deducted from your amount. 
For example, you have taken a loan of 100,000 dollars or 100,000 rupees, and the total amount is 500,000 rupees that you have in your home, cash in hand, cash in bank, stock everything. So you have to minus from 500,000, 100,000. So you have to pay zakat on 400,000. But if you put the 500,000 and you have given loan of 200,000 dollars to somebody else, and you have to receive 100,000 dollars because of goods you have sold, so 500 plus 200,000 plus 100,000, you have to pay zakat on 800,000 dollars. So in all, you have to calculate on one particular day of the year, and then you have to pay zakat 2.5% on that.